Okay, so rsync is one of those commands that's worth learning just because of how useful it is. But I think rather than trying to memorize all the various flags, it's more worth your time to just have a basic understanding of when to use it. Like, what are the actual scenarios in which you might be using rsync or some combination of flags with it? So that's what I want to go over in this video. And first of all, if you don't know what rsync is at all, Essentially, it's just a tool for copying and transferring files, um, either remotely or locally, but generally remotely over SSH. Um, there are specific scenarios that you'd want to use it locally, but it's not just a replacement for core utils tools. It's not just a replacement for move and copy because it is pretty much, it's often slower than move and copy. Um, but sometimes you might want to use it locally if you're actually looking to use one of the specific features it offers. And the two key features, in my opinion, I mean, there's a lot of really good Good features honestly but the two most worthwhile features to me are it's got delta transfers and it's got partial transfers and what those mean so first of all delta transfers um that's only going to transfer changed files so say i've got like a directory with a thousand files in it right and I'm backing up that directory every day to some remote server somewhere. If I make changes in only five of those files, I don't want to recopy all a thousand files. I only want to recopy those five that were actually changed. So rsync is just going to automatically take care of that for me. I'm not going to have to worry about it. Um, and then partial transfers is if for some reason your transfer is getting interrupted partway through, rsync can make sure that it's splitting a file into chunks. And therefore, if you know your transfer gets interrupted, you can rerun the exact same command and it's just going to pick up right where it left off. So an example being, say you've got like a hard drive with a really finicky cable and if you nudge your hard drive while it's transferring, it unplugs and you know if you were just using plain old core utils move, you're going to have to start again, especially if you know it's a really big file that you're trying to transfer. Whereas if you use rsync with the uh, partial flag on it, it's going to allow you to just pick up right where you left off because it's splitting that file into trunk chunks there. So um, th that's kind of a true story, actually. So if you have any situation where you're going to need partial transfers, I don't know, bad internet, something like that. Um, but anyways, let's look at some of the basics of rsync. Um, I have a ThinkPad in the other room. It's got SSH enabled and it's you know currently running here. Um, if you don't really know how SSH works, I would say that's probably a prerequisite to rsync. So like understand SSH just in a basic sense first. Um, but anyways, I've got it set, it up, set up with an SSH key pair. Um, and I can just go ahead, if I just make some random file here, I can just do rsync file to giraffe. Giraffe is the host name. And I can put a colon. That's gonna go ahead, send it to giraffe's home directory there. Now, if I wanted to send it to a different user, by default, rsync is smart enough to know, okay, if no username is actually given, it's the same username. So I actually have, you know, bread is my username there, it's my username here. I don't have to give rsync a username, but say I wanted to give it, you know, root at giraffe, I could do that. Or if I wanted to, instead of sending it to giraffe's home directory, I could send it to like downloads or something like that. And you know, if I SSH back in and list out downloads, like my file is gonna be there. Perfect. Okay, so that's that's the really basic syntax. Um, let's look at some of the most important flags. So I've got a directory called DWM test here. Um, example directory. Let's actually, for the sake of this example, pretend that there is some subdirectory in this directory with like a bunch more files in it. Um, there isn't, but let's like just pretend that there is, okay? So I could do rsync r, and that's gonna recursively take care of that imaginary subdirectory. I can also do capital P. And capital P is for two different flags bundled into one flag, um, both dash dash partial, which is what I was talking about earlier with the partial transfers, and also dash uh, dash progress, which is just gonna show you progress as you're transferring. So that's capital P. I also wanna add on the A flag, which is really useful in the event that you're trying to copy files with specific permissions. Essentially what A does is it's gonna make sure that file uh, permissions, metadata, or other data on the files is all retained. A stands for like archive mode, something like that. So um, maybe you're in a situation where you're trying to copy over system files to a different system. Like maybe I have some system files on this PC here that I wanna copy over to the ThinkPad so that I can use them on the ThinkPad, right? I need to keep the same permissions because it, as you probably know, or maybe you don't know, but now you know, um, Linux file permissions on system files can be kind of annoying to work with and you definitely don't wanna be setting that up manually. So you wanna keep and preserve permissions um, or if you just need to be preserving metadata for any reason, that's the A flag. Um, I'm also gonna add V and H. Um, v, as with most different commands, is just going to be for verbose, which means it's just going to give us more info as we transfer. H is going to be human readable data sizes, so instead of saying like a million bytes, it's going to give me some number I can actually interpret. 
Um, and now I'm gonna put my directory here. Now, um, this is actually something really important. There is a slash at the end of this directory when I automatically tab it in. And this slash for rsync is bad. We have to remove this because rsync follows uh, BSD uh, trailing slash conventions, which means that if this trailing slash is left here, it's gonna take all of these files and transfer them individually without creating this DWM directory uh, first. It's just gonna take all of these files and slap them in like the home directory or whatever path I give. So I have to remove this flash so that way the DWM test directory actually gets created. And then I can go ahead and say, you know, I want it to go to draft, put the colon there, and it's gonna transfer. Okay. Perfect, so let's say I uh, change some file. Um, I can just like go into a DWM test here and do config def h and just like, I don't know, delete a bunch of lines here, whatever. Go ahead, write that. So my file is changed. If I rerun that rsync command exactly, it's gonna say, okay, all of these files are actually up to date already. Like we don't need to retransfer any of those files. We're just gonna transfer this one config def h file that was changed. And that right there is the beauty of rsync. That is like the most important feature about rsync that that's that's why you would use rsync really. Um, but anyways, there's a bunch of other features. Let's actually look at rsync's uh, man page for some more of the features. If I go down to summary here, um, you'll see there's like five different delete flags, which is kind of confusing if you don't know what they do because there, there's like five of them. So plain old delete by itself, what it does is Say I delete a file in that DWM test directory, say I delete that config def h file. If I give it the dash dash delete flag, it will also delete that file on the ThinkPad when I run rsync, right? And the reason for that is if you're trying to keep, you know, two directories in exact sync, like say you have a web server that you're trying to, you know, push exact changes to. The reason this isn't present by default, this behavior for deleting those files is not present by default is because if you're just doing normal, you know, backups, you don't want to delete files that, you know, maybe I accidentally deleted that config def h file. I don't want that deleted on my ThinkPad because if my ThinkPad is, you know, my, my backup of these files, I wouldn't want that deleted, right? So that's the dash dash delete flag. And these other flags are just modification of the delete flags behavior. So the before, during, delay, and after are all just changing when that deletion actually happens. So for example, what delete before is used for is um, say I'm running out of space on the ThinkPad and I'm gonna you know, transfer a bunch of files, but I'm also deleting some files that are you know, present in that directory on the ThinkPad. I need to make sure those are deleted before the other files are transferred because I'm running out of space. So I'm not gonna have space for the rest of the transfer until I do that deletion. So that's what delete is before is for. Um, delete after. Uh, vice versa, delete after the transfer has finished. Now this is kind of useful, um, just learning using dash dash delete after as like a muscle memory thing rather than just plain old dash dash delete, because this is gonna give you the opportunity if you realize partway through your transfer, like, oh no, I deleted a file that I really didn't mean to delete and my backup still has it. Let me real quick pause this transfer before rsync actually gets to deleting that backed up file. So that's a pretty useful flag. And then during and delay are kind of self-explanatory um, during the transfer or find deletions during and then delete after. Delete excluded actually brings me to the dash dash exclude, exclude flag, which is a pretty important fla flag, but it's also kind of self-explanatory, just excluding various files with pattern matching if needed. So if you've got, you know, some directory or some files in a directory, you don't want to transfer, whatever. Um, then there's dash dash update, which is another really important flag, if I can find it up here. So what update is for, let me like give you an example here. So say I'm working on a set of files and there's another random person called person B who's also working on the same set of files, right? And we're both pushing our changes to the same remote server, um, but person B is working on, you know, file B and I'm working on file A, okay? And we both have copies of each other's files, but I'm working on file A, they're working on file B. They're gonna push their changes on file B, but I still have an older copy of file A, or file B, sorry. I still have an older copy of their file B, right? So if I use dash dash update, I'm not gonna overwrite their newer copy of file B with my you know, older copy of file B. I'm just gonna push my file A that I changed. So that's the use case for dash dash update. Um, and there's a bunch of other flags here. Like there's literally a hundred flags or something like that. Um, these all are gonna have different use cases, but I think those are the key flags to really know.
I did want to talk through the ArchWiki article on rsync really quickly just because, um, well, the ArchWiki, even if you hate Arch Linux, is just such a helpful resource. Um, as, you know, no exception with rsync here. It's got a bunch of scripts for uh, how to set up backups with rsync, which if you've never worked with rsync at all and you just want to get some basic backup setting going, uh, this can this can help you a lot. So for example, this example here is for a daily backup. So in Etsy cron daily, um, it actually gives dash dash delete um, as an example option to use for this backup. I wouldn't really recommend using dash dash delete just randomly on your backups, uh, just because the whole point of dash dash delete is kind of for syncing, right? Um, if you're gonna be backing up, you probably wanna keep the backed up files of your you know deleted files just in case you deleted something by accident. I mean, obviously this is gonna depend on what you're exactly trying to do, but you know, generally like don't throw around dash dash delete without being sure that that's what you want, right? Um, anyways, there's also, you know, same thing, but with SSH um, and a bunch of other examples for various ways you could set up backup. So I will link this page in the description. Um, it also tells you down here how to restore a backup. Um, if you want to restore a backup, use the same rsync command, but just use it in reverse. So you're going to take from the destination, put it back on the source. Um, anyways, this page is super helpful. So it also tells you, you know, advanced uses of filter rules, all sorts of stuff. I will link it. Anyways, hopefully you now have a basic understanding of rsync. I will see you next time. Peace.